Hello and welcome to Megawatt News, I'm Katie Scott. In the headlines today, consumers are waiting for the 3G iPhone, BBC iPlayer hits yet another milestone, OMPC second generation laptop is unveiled, Nintendo fighting million euro EU fine and Christian Dior fashion phones. Almost one in four potential iPhone buyers in the States have said that they have been putting off their purchase until Apple launches the next-gen 3G model. According to the data from ChangeWave Research, a quarter of the people polled in March who were planning on buying an iPhone said that they were postponing their purchase until Apple releases a new model or were waiting for 3G compatibility. Assuming the next iPhone is 3G compatible, it's good news for Apple, a spokesperson from ChangeWave said. Rumour has it that the 3G iPhone will be announced at the Worldwide Developers Conference at the beginning of next month, but Apple is not confirming or denying this piece of juicy gossip. The BBC iPlayer has now received more than 75 million requests to stream or download programmes. The total number of requests in April was 21 million, rising from 17.2 million in March and representing growth of over 20% month on month. Average weekly users of BBC iPlayer reached 1.4 million in April, up from 1.1 million in March and approximately doubling January's average of 750,000 users. The average daily number of requests to download or stream programmes via the iPlayer rose to 700,000 in April, with Doctor Who and The Apprentice top of the list. The head of the One Laptop Per Child Foundation, Nicholas Negroponte, has unveiled the second generation of the OLPC XO laptop, which will be called the XO2. Details about the laptop's hardware were short on the ground, but the new system has two touch-sensitive displays. Half the size of the original machine, the XO2 will look like a foldable e-book. It will offer dual indoor and sunlight displays that, when in vertical format, will take the form of right and left pages, but in horizontal mode will become a flat two-screen surface for tablet-esque use. It's scheduled to be released in 2010 with a $75 price point, something raising eyebrows in the tech world, considering that the original, much less spec model, never made it to the $100 price point promised. Nintendo is refusing to pay a 149.1 million euro fine slapped on it for allegedly price fixing. European Union regulators fined the gaming giant in 2002, following on from allegations that Nintendo and seven distributors had colluded to raise hardware and software prices between 1991 and 1998. They were found guilty as charged and one of the biggest ever fines in EU competition's history levied against Nintendo, but now the game's console maker is fighting the fine. The penalty was unfair, illegal, even shocking, Ian Forrester, representing Nintendo, told the European Court of First Instance in Luxembourg, but European authorities insist the fine was fair. The fine was not of a capricious nature or based on world estimates, said a commission lawyer. This fine was for an infringement that was considered very serious. Christian Dior is the latest high-end fashion house to jump on the consumer electronics bandwagon by launching a mobile range following similar offerings from Armani, Prada and Dolce & Gabbana. Dior has unveiled a line of mobile phones particularly aimed at brand-hungry consumers in new markets such as China and Russia. The new Dior phone will cost from around 2,500 quid and is created and manufactured by French company Mode Labs. There's not a lot known hardware-wise at this stage other than the fact that the phone will offer a touchscreen display, camera and a mini phone extender dubbed My Dior that's about the size of a USB key and designed to clip to the outside of a bag for easy access. But for two and a half grand, there's got to be more to it than that. Those were the biggest stories of the day. Join us again tomorrow for more news and views from the world of gadgets and technology. And in the meantime, if you've got any feedback on any of our stories, please email news at megawatt.tv.